how we move again. I'll get that right. <laughs> change, change time. Um, welcome to Holy Spirit Anglican Church. Um, everything that you need to join us in worship today is in your bulletin. Um, we believe that worship should be a community event and not just you watching us. And so anything that is involved is for you to say. Um, what else do I have to say? Um, oh. So we used to start at 1002. Uh, we don't start at, at 302 because I couldn't find a good Bible verse that goes along with church planting. Uh, that was chapter 3, verse 2. So um, nevertheless, we are going to open with um, prayer. So Heavenly Father, uh, we lift up to you. Um, who should we lift up? Let, let, let's lift up Father Alex uh, Layton uh, over in Bozeman. We pray for him and for his family. Uh, Lord, we uh, lift up uh, Bozeman Anglican. We pray that you would uh, continue to bless them, continue to uh, help them to reach out to the community around them. Uh, give Alex encouragement and blessing. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening again this morning is Lift Up Your Head, Ye Mighty Gates. Please stand. <laughs> Today we light the third candle as we continue our Advent journey together. This is the candle of joy. Today we hear from the prophet of a world that rejoices, a world where we no longer wait for the coming Messiah because he is in our midst. We watch and we wait for these signs of the inbreaking of God's kingdom. We wait in hope and peace and with joy. 
joy in her hope we rejoice prepares our hearts for the coming of the Lord. Today, in expectation, we light the candle of joy. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. Isaiah 65, 18. Let us pray. God of joy, whose joy it was to come to your creation so that you might restore it to its full glory, may our spirits rejoice in the birth of Christ our Savior, and whom we are privileged to experience your mercy and see your glory. Amidst the troubles of this world, show us the joy of the kingdom, no matter our circumstance, the joy of service as we seek to be your church in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues as we acknowledge that this is all about God, who he is, and who we are. Please join me in the acclamation. Surely the Lord is coming soon. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The prayer for purity helps us prepare for us to come close to God in worship. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Having heard the law of God and realizing that we do not live up to it, we can only respond by asking God for mercy. Please join me in the Kyrie. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Join me in reciting the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your ministries may likewise make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient toward the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found a people acceptable in your sight. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. The Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah 65, verses 7 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. 
I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall be there it shall be there in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the servant's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Oh, yes, yeah, all right, you did a good job. Yeah, you did it, bro, that was beautiful. You didn't, oh my gosh, you pronounced every word just perfectly. It was amazing, just Jesus Christ, yeah, you did Praise it. Praise the Lord. That was beautiful. Praise the Lord, yes, yes. Amazing, that was wonderful. I couldn't get it, but that was perfect, that was beautiful. Indeed. Our Psalter reading this morning or this afternoon, it's going to be hard to get used to that, isn't it? Is that Psalm 126? Please read with me at the half verse enthusiastically. <laughs> Sergio will have no problem. <laughs> when the Lord overturned the captivity of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Indeed, the Lord has done great things for us already. Whereof we rejoice. Overturn our captivity, O Lord. As we have streams refresh the deserts of the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in songs of joy. He who goes on his way weeping and bears good seed. Shall thou come again with joy and bring his sheep to the kingdom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 28. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole, whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We bring the gospel into the midst of the congregation before reading. It is a reminder that Christ came among us. Please stand 
and join us as we sing the gospel hymn found in your bulletin. We'll sing the first two verses, then hear the gospel, then sing the last.
Please be with Father John today on this most holy day in this wonderful church. Help us to understand and just to be able to say how happy we are to be here together and to be worshiping together. Bless the words that Father John is going to give us. And please be seated. So the past two Sundays, we've been talking about waiting and preparing as a follower of Jesus. First, we talked about waiting with hope. Last week, we talked about waiting with peace. And this Sunday of Advent is a little different from the others. We lit a pink candle, the candle of joy. We call it Gaudete Sunday, which is Latin for rejoice. And some priests um, actually wear pink vestments. It's like the only day of the year that they do that. Um, and I only know one, and that's Father James. Father John Lake. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about rejoicing while waiting and preparing. And as in the past two weeks, we're going to start with Isaiah. In the first part of this chapter, God talks about two different groups of people. Some are going to be destroyed, and others are going to be blessed. And there are several verses that are addressed to those who are going to be destroyed. And then the focus changes on those who will be blessed, those God calls his servants. Which leads us to our scripture reading that begins with the word for. So if we start just a little bit before the reading, we hear this. The former troubles are forgotten and are hidden from my eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Just the thought of a new creation stirs us to rejoice, doesn't it? The promise of something not just different, but better than what we have now. And suddenly the promised land becomes not just Israel, but a whole new universe. And this section goes on to describe that promised land as one of joy, full life, security, fellowship with God, and peace. God's new creation is so wonderful that the things that happened before this life that we're in now won't even be remembered. Not only does God forget the past troubles, so do we. Won't that be wonderful? You know, we get get hung up on our past sins sometimes. It's almost like it's harder for us to forgive ourselves than for God to forgive us. God says in Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Yet we remember. How often do we ask God to forgive us for a particular sin, then one or two days later we find ourselves saying, God, you remember that thing I did the other day? And his answer is, nope. He doesn't remember. So not only will we not remember the bad stuff that we experienced, we won't remember the bad stuff that we did. It can be hard to rejoice when you're feeling guilt or shame, but the new creation will make it abundantly clear that our guilt and shame have been removed through Jesus Christ. Now that is a reason to rejoice. In fact, in verse 18, it says it will be an eternal rejoicing in the new Jerusalem, all of God's creation, and in the people. Verse 19, not only will will we be rejoicing, but so will God. He will rejoice over Jerusalem. It reminds me of Genesis. And God saw that it was very good. God will rejoice over his new creation and his people. Again, doesn't it just lift your heart when you think about God rejoicing over you? One of my favorite scriptures is from Zephaniah. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. And sometimes that word exult is actually translated like dancing and singing. I love the picture of God dancing and singing about me. Hallelujah. I mean, that is enough to make us rejoice, isn't it? Just that picture of that. Verses 19 through 23 describe the blessings of this new creation. No more sounds of weeping or distress. There's a subtle difference there. The sound of weeping, as as we know, is kind of this deep emotional cry. The 
The sound of distress is someone responding to something. So it's kind of like saying that both the emotion and the cause of the emotion are gone. There's going to be long life. It's actually a difficult section because it sounds like death is still going to be present, but uh, there are other places in Scripture, and scholars are uh, kind of discuss about this one, that, that death will be swallowed up forever. There will be no death. The point that Isaiah is making here is that there will be an absence of the things that take away our joy. We talked about the absence of guilt and shame that leads us to be able to rejoice. Certainly, the absence of grief and loss will also enable us to rejoice. Verses 21 through 23 speak of security. We won't want for things, and we won't have things taken from us. As just kind of an aside, it's interesting that in this new creation, just like in the Garden of Eden, we have work to do. Finally, in verses 24 through 25, there's this talk of unity and peace. Unity and peace between man and God. God will answer even before we finish asking for something. I suspect that he does that a lot now. We just don't realize it. Unity and peace between all of creation. Clearly, there's a lot to rejoice about in this new creation. There's no guilt or shame. There's no grieving or weeping. There's no distress, no death, no losing the fruit of our labor to someone else, no separation from God, no hurt or destruction. But all this rejoicing is in the future when Jesus returns and God's new creation is established. What about rejoicing in this in-between time? Well, as we mentioned before, Paul addresses this in his letter to the Thessalonians, and much of his letter has to do with how to live as followers of Jesus until he returns. And today's reading is the closing of that letter. This section is addressed to the Thessalonian church as a whole, not just as individuals, and everyone in the church is to have a role in keeping the peace in the church, in preparing themselves and the church as a whole for Jesus' return. This includes respecting the church leaders, admonishing the idle. Now, in, in Paul's time, he was referring to those who figured, well, Jesus is coming soon, so why should I bother to work hard and, and be a productive member of the church? Today, it's kind of the opposite, isn't it? Well, Jesus is never going to come, so why should I work hard and be a productive member of the church? We're told to encourage the faint-hearted, and, and the word there could mean the discouraged, the fearful, the sad, the ones lacking self-confidence. We'll have a little bit more to say about this group near the end. We're told to help the weak. That could mean physically weak, but also spiritually or morally weak. Now we're told to be patient with everyone. We need patience when we're dealing with the idle, the faint-hearted, and the weak. And it can help when we remember how much patience God has shown us. We're told to not seek revenge, but seek good, not just within the church, but with everyone. A reminder that Jesus himself said, but I say to you who here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. So before we go on, let me point out that each of these groups is in danger of losing their joy. Leaders, it's easy as a pastor to get discouraged. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the idle, those who feel like they can just coast along, often find their joy in things other than serving others and serving God. At least they think they found joy in those things. But those are the things that Jesus tells us will be destroyed by the moth and the rust. The faint-hearted, those who have been hurt for whatever reason, find it hard to rejoice in the midst of that hurt. The weak, those that are sick physically or spiritually, also find it difficult to rejoice in brokenness. And the impatient, finally we, when we are impatient, may find our joy stripped from us, because we become irritated at others, or God, or even ourselves. But all of these have in common is that they're focusing on current circumstances instead of God and his promises. 
Now, the last two weeks, we've been talking about how we keep our hope and our peace through remembering three things. God's character, God's past actions, and our relationship to God. The same is true about our ability to rejoice. It's much easier to find joy in God and our relationship to him than in ourselves and in our relationship to our circumstances. Paul goes on with some more commands. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Now how in the world can we be expected to do these three things? Always be happy. Never stop praying. Thank God for everything. That's not exactly what Paul is saying. Essentially, in each of these, Paul is saying, focus on God, not the circumstances. We can rejoice in knowing God and knowing he has a plan, even in the midst of troubles and sorrows. When I was in college, uh, my mother was diagnosed with leukemia. And I can remember driving home uh, after getting that news, and I can remember beating on the dashboard and essentially yelling at God. And right after that, I sang the doxology. Praise God, you know that one? I got more peace and joy out of that doxology than I did out of yelling at God and pounding on the dashboard. We can praise God and rejoice even in the midst of troubles and sorrows. We can live our life as a prayer, focusing on being in the moment with God, and we can always be thankful for God's grace and mercy. Finally, Paul goes back to who God's character, or, or who God is and his character in our relationship with him. God is a God of peace. He is faithful. He sanctifies us. He keeps us blameless. He calls us and then those wonderful words, God will surely do it. I want to touch very briefly on the gospel, as it also has something to say about living in this in-between time. John the Baptist uses this word picture of the best man rejoicing at the union of the groom and the bride. And he says, therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. John recognized that Jesus' appearance on earth the incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us, is the beginning of the kingdom of God. We can also rejoice now in knowing that God's kingdom is here now, and we have a part to play in it. All right, we've dissected the scriptures quite a bit today, but how do we apply it to ourselves and as individuals and as a church? Well, let's start with this. Can you rejoice without joy? No. Well, I'm going to play it with words a little bit here, so bear with me. And hopefully I'll, I'll make my point clear. Joy is a feeling. It's an emotion. I had joy when I saw my wife come down the aisle at our wedding. I had joy when I held my daughter in my hands for the first time. But rejoicing is an action. Rejoicing is a choice. We often talk about forgiving someone in the same way. You may not feel forgiveness, but you can choose to forgive. You may have to forgive over and over and over again, but usually if you do it often enough, the feeling of forgiveness comes along. We can choose to rejoice in the midst of pain, grief, sorrow, anger, boredom, whatever the emotion is, we can still choose to rejoice. Yeah, it may feel false and fake, but if we do it long enough, it will become real. And again, the question becomes, what or who are we rejoicing in? And ultimately, the answer to that has to be God himself. Even in the new creation of heaven and earth, our joy should not be in the new creation, but in the creator. It's not the circumstances, even when the circumstances are good. It's rejoicing in God, his character, his actions, and our relationship with him. That is where we find the reason to rejoice. One last thing. I said we'd come back to encouraging the faint-hearted. We all get down. We all get anxious. 
But for some, Christmas can be a very difficult time. Those that have depression or an anxiety disorder, those that are grieving the loss of someone they love, these people are truly having a blue Christmas. So first of all, if you fit into one of these categories, I understand how unhelpful it is for me to say rejoicing is a choice. I get that. It may not seem like a choice right now, and even if it is a choice, you just don't have the energy to do it. I get it. I've been there. I'm not telling you just cheer up or, or pull yourself up by your bootstraps or put on a happy face. What I am telling you is that joy is possible. There is reason to rejoice. Remember, he who calls you is faithful. The other thing that I want to tell you is you are not alone. You have this wonderful family of Christian brothers and sisters who want to be an encouragement to you. We often get it wrong because we don't always understand. So we fumble around and we say things to, to cheer you up or we try to get you out of the house and active. We say and do these things because we love you. And we often don't know how else to show that love. To you who may be in the midst of encouraging someone who is faint-hearted, as Paul said, be patient with them all. And don't forget to rejoice about yourself or with yourself. And perhaps the biggest encouragement is to just be present. Brothers and sisters, remember God's character. He is faithful. Remember God's actions. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember your relationship to God. You are sons and daughters of God. And when we remember those things, we can rejoice. I want to close with a prayer that Anselm, uh, he was the Archbishop of Canterbury in the 11th century. This was part of one of his writings. I pray, O God, that I may know you and love you, so that I may rejoice in you. And if I cannot do so fully in this life, May I progress gradually until it comes to fullness. Let the knowledge of you grow in me here and there be made complete. Let your love grow in me here and there be made complete. So that here my joy may be great in hope and there be complete in reality.
We'll pause after each prayer, and at that time, feel free to say aloud or sit silently anything brought to mind by that section of prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give you thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God.
most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now that we have received peace from God, please give peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Please greet one another. service continues with the offering. This is the part of our service. There we go. Our service continues with the offering. This is the part of our service where those who are regular members of our church are encouraged to give for the support of the church through their donations. If you're a guest here today, please do not feel any obligation to give. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Our offertory hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
take time out for a quick liturgical tip. Um, so we just sung uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. If I am really organized today after church, um, on the website there's a section where there's little short videos that I've put together. One of those videos that is going to be on there tonight is the O Antiphons. So an antiphon is something that comes before and after, like the psalm or something like that. Um, and we're entering into the season, the seven days before Christmas, where on morning prayer, there's a different antiphon each day. And they all start with O, like O come, O come. And that's actually where we get this song from, uh, is, the, is the O antiphon. So stay tuned for that uh, and look at the website, because it really is kind of interesting. That being said, let's continue our worship service. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament to be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. 
Hallelujah. Please join me in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, living your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Please be seated uh, for just a, a little bit of instruction here. So anybody who is baptized is welcome to come to communion today. Um, if you prefer not to take communion, we still encourage you to come up. You can place your arms uh, across your chest and I will give you a blessing. If you prefer to stay where you are, that's okay too. But we long for the day know the Jesus that we know and are able to partake of the meal of which we are about to partake. We have both the common cup and individual cups. Um, Jim Schaefer is going to be our usher today um, and he's going to help us out. So just a little tweak from what we did last time. Um, same kind of principle but we're going to start from the back and we're going to work our way to the front so people aren't running into each other as much. So this side kind of like this half and all of this is going to start first. Um, and we'll start from the back, come up, um, I'll be here, the cups will be here, if you want to kneel, please kneel in front of the cup, and I will just kind of reach over and give you the credit. Um, and then, when we're done with this side, we'll switch to the other side. Got it? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
thing you do is let all mortal flesh keep silent. Let's spot on. sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Anybody traveling? All alone? You're driving on your own? No? <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. You, you going to tell us how old he is? Um, he's turning 41. He's a young guy? <laughs> so, oh, oh. don't get us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for birthdays. We thank you for life, uh, not just physical life, but eternal life. Uh, bless all those that are having birthdays today. 
wherever they may be. Keep them safe and watch over them in Jesus' name. Yeah, that is the best. Where are you going? Oh, yeah. Okay. Men's State. Washington. Washington. No R. I know, I said Washington. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of travel. Um, Lord, uh, as this is going to be a busy week, uh, we pray for all those that are traveling, those that are uh, traveling from our congregation, those that are coming here uh, as family members to visit. Um, watch over them, keep them safe, uh, and may they shine your light wherever they go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so right after this, we're going to have um, our annual meeting, and that's going to be, um, we'll have the soup so you guys can get your soup. And, oh, what? Oh. Yes, okay. <laughs> After that's going to be who's having a dental procedure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting this collar all laid out, so really my collar doesn't fall apart. I never got to have one on mine. Mine still has this. Heavenly Father, we lift up Dan to you. We pray that you'd be with him uh, during his surgery, give him peace about the procedure. Uh, may he heal quickly, without pain, without inflammation. Guide the hands of the surgeons. Uh, guide um, all those that will be part of his caregiving team. Give them wisdom and discernment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Annual meeting. So get your soup, get your bread, get your dessert, and then stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I promise the annual meeting will be short, um, but we do need to do that. It's part of the, the way things go. Um, we need readers for Christmas Day or everything. Or, so just a reminder, Christmas, the Sunday, which is technically the fourth Sunday of Advent, we'll have our regular service at 3 p.m. It's going to be short. Um, and then after that, in the evening at 8 p.m., we're going to have uh, Christmas Eve service, and then Monday, the 25th, at 10 a.m., we're going to have Christmas Day service. So we need readers for a lot of that. Christmas Eve, we need readers. Okay. Just talk to Jim. And Tara. And Tara. All right. Any other announcements? Okay, a recessional hymn. Oh, oh. Right. And you saw it, it was like hurting cats. <laughs> what I was thinking, you get that side back to front. All right. And we'll do this section back to front, and you can circle this way. The first come in, the first come out, the first go in. Then we'll do this side back to front. That's what I think he's trying to relay. We got kind of mixed up because everybody thought all of the backs were coming forward at one time. And that didn't work. So that was what we were trying to do. So don't meow, meow, like her cat. Okay? Love you all. <laughs> Next time it'll be like a food ride or something. <laughs> all right, our recessional hymn is O Come Divine Messiah. Please stand.
blessing to the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.